Hey all, this is John, trying to make a, another batch of hard candy and I was able to take a video of it again. This is uh, my attempt at a floral design. It's a traditional Japanese style of uh, Kentaro Ami. I hope I said that right, I don't really know for sure. Uh, but basically it's a floral design uh, inside a clear wrap so it gets a bit of three dimensionality to it and uh, uh, hopefully it'll look nice. Uh, these are small batch card candies that I'm making, meaning that the whole size of the batch is four cups of sugar, uh, one and a third cups of glucose, and uh, one cup of water. So it's pretty small. It makes this extra challenging for these complicated designs. The candy gets cold really fast and it gets hot really fast. So uh, it makes it difficult to maintain temperature um, that you can do eat more easily when you have a big, large batch. Um, anyway, nevertheless, we'll see how it turns out. I hope it turns out okay. And uh, we'll uh, walk through it. So right now I'm just adding the color as the candy cools, uh, trying to a, boil off any water in the dye or in the coloring, and then uh, also to try to maintain an even temperature by pulling the cool edges into the hot center. Uh, once that's complete, we can start working on uh, pulling it, which is what I'm doing now, which does a couple things. And an even color throughout the mix. Uh, obviously, I'm going to skip that for the clear because I want that to try to be uh, transparent in the candy. Um, I'm just for, I don't know, I tried just a color pattern as a white petal with a purple perimeter and a yellow center, and uh, hopefully that looks okay. And we'll see what it, how it turns out. Um, you'll see me uh, manipulating quite a bit of the hot plate here, which is just a pancake griddle that I use, and I'll, you'll see me take the candy off and on as it gets too hot or too cool. Um, but the idea is to try to maintain sort of that Play-Doh type consistency so I can do some molding. Uh, right now I'm uh, put adding a little white to the purple color. I thought it was a little bit too dark. It's hard to judge sometimes with these paste uh, dyes to get the color just right. Um, nevertheless, here we go. Uh, now I'm going to start making the petals. Uh, so I think I picked six to try to, um, I don't know, make a six petal flower. And uh, each one will be essentially white with a purple perimeter on the outside. And so that's kind of what I'm working on now. So first I'm gonna try to make the purple white uh, uh, combination, and then I'll cut it up into six uh, units that uh, I can use to make each one of the petals. You'll also see me rotate the candy every once in a while. That's just because it's hotly hot on one side and cool on the other. I do have a heat lamp this time, which sort of helps uh, maintain temperature from above and below, but uh, still pretty challenging. Now I'm going to try to make each one of these a, sort of a triangle shape to reflect what a petal might look like. So for each one of the petals to not overlap with each other, here I'm get, after I make the, the first here, I'll put a bit of clear color in between each one. Hopefully that will help define the edges of the petal and the candy. Obviously you've noticed I've sped this up quite a bit just to try to make the video go by faster. I'll slow it down a little bit when we get to the final uh, candies to see what they look like. But like I said, this is my first time I have Hopefully, I have high hopes, but we'll see how it turns out. It, uh, by, if you're curious, it's a, this is a raspberry flavor. It's a, a flavor I had on hand, and this is sort of a trial batch, so hopefully it'll taste okay. This particular mixture uh, is pretty popular. Now I'm making the uh, center of the flower. Uh, I decided to take use yellow, and I just wrapped it in a bit of purple so it would have a purple edge around it. Now, and I'm assembling now the layers of the petals around that yellow core. This is the hardest thing to judge um, size-wise to say, do I have enough petals to cover the entire perimeter? And now I'm going to stretch out the clear, and that'll be the wrap for the, uh, for the whole structure. As long as I work hot, everything sticks together nicely. Uh, if it cools a little bit, sometimes you could put a little water in between the edges and help sort of glue it together. Didn't have to here. Um, so now I've got my 
porous cylinder, and this is what I'll use to stretch out and actually make the small candies. Which is what I'm doing now, is just trying to maintain the cylinder and start stretching it out to pull uh, ropes out, essentially, that I can then cool down and cut into candies. I usually get about six of these out of a batch this size. See, I turned the, the light off above because I, now I'm just trying to cool things down so I don't need the extra heat. All right, now I'm gonna spend about 10 minutes rolling this candy back and forth to uh, try to maintain its shape as it cools down. And then once it gets cool enough, I can uh, start breaking it up into small bite-sized uh, candies. I guess you don't technically bite them, but you know, small candies. All right, I'm just getting set up here. Uh, I'm gonna turn the camera around here in just a minute so you can kind of see that last piece. But really for me, having some patience to wait for this to cool, to chop them up is one of the hardest things. Um, in fact, I probably pulled these a little too early. They were a little bit, uh, a little soft to, to cut, but they still worked okay. see what they look like. Not bad for my first uh, first try at this. I do really like the clear wrap because it gives a, a lot of dimension and uh, it's hard to see with the camera but you kind of see the edges of the design is it through the middle of the candy which is kind of cool. There's just a couple I picked up to show you what they look like.